Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Rekha Govindman. I'm a prosthodontist and an implantologist. I'm thankful to Dental Hub for giving me this opportunity to speak to you. I hope you all are relaxing in this unprecedented lockdown and learning a new skill, keeping in touch with your loved ones and sticking to a reasonably healthy routine. So I'm talking about an uh, entity called the neutral zone what it is, what it determines, what is its clinical significance, who studied about it first, then what are the boundaries of this neutral zone, how we could change it, what are the take-home messages. So, so what is neutral zone? Neutral zone is a zone in the oral cavity wherein the outward horizontal forces from the tongue are equal to the inward horizontal forces from the perioral muscles. So this zone varies from person to person depending upon the strength of contraction of these individual muscles. Why? What does this in neutral zone determine? It determines the position of the teeth in the arch, the alignment of the teeth in the arch, the shape of the dentoalveolar arch, the shape and position of the alveolar process, the maxillary and mandibular process. Thereby, since it's affecting all these, it is affecting the profile of the face of the individual. Okay, so what is the clinical significance? Any treatment that we do, be it orthodontic, orthonatic, periodontal, restorative, the end results of these treatments must respect this neutral zone. Else, they will be causing interference to function. The patient will be uncomfortable. They will not withstand the forces of occlusion or the forces of these muscles and the prognosis will be poor. Okay, so the, any treatment that we do should respect this neutral zone. The zone where the forces from the tongue are equal to the forces of the perioral muscles. It was Sir Frederick, Sidney Frederick who studied about the effect of the musculature on the teeth and the alveolus and he said anyone who intends to change the position or the alignment of teeth must study the adjacent musculature first because it is the muscles which will affect the final outcome of whatever treatment that we do okay so what are these muscles from inside, it is the tongue, which has got extrinsic and intrinsic muscles. The four extrinsic muscles which are originating in the bone, that is the genioglossus, hyoglossus, palatoglossus and the styloglossus. And the intrinsic muscles are which, which are completely within the body of the tongue, which are affecting the contraction, the positioning of the tip of the tongue, where the margins of the tongue lie. In conjunction with the extrinsic muscles, they determine where the tongue how much forces it exerts outwards horizontally okay and from the outside we have the buccinator and the orbicularis forus the buccinator has got three bands the upper middle and the lower band the upper band originates at the epiasis of the first molar maxillary molar and then it traverses backwards distally and reaches the suture of the maxillary bone and the palatine bone goes distally further and reaches the pterygoid hamulus. The middle bone will start from the pterygoid hamus and traverse inferiorly, anteriorly, reaching the distal end of the internal oblique line. It is along the pterygomandibular raphe. The lower band will start from the epicus of the mandibular molar and run distally along the border of the mandibular alveolus, past the third mandibular molar reach the distal end of the retromandibular tissue and then cross over onto the lingual side and reach the distal end of the internal to oblique line. So this is the buccinator muscle. The upper and the lower band, since they have skeletal origins, they exert more contraction, unlike the middle band. And the lower band will decussate and intermingle with the fibers of the orbicularis forus which is originating at the midline the maxillary and the mandibular and reaching the modulus so it is an entire elastic band which is encompassing this dentoalveolar structure like an elastic band which is holding the dentoalveolar structure so the forces which are exerted from outside inwards and the forces which are 
exerted from inside outwards determine the zone in between them the shape and extent of this neutral zone so that is the boundary the musculature around the neutral zone okay how would you determine a neutral zone for a completely edentulous patient if you're making a removable processes you would go by the conventional conventional method of making a primary impression the secondary impression the master cast and then the denture base then the wax rims determining the vertical dimension of occlusion articulating the casts with the rims and then you would remove the max mandibular wax rim okay and then you would mold mold seven parts of green stick compound and three parts of cake compound in a pot in a bowl containing hot water which would have a gauze piece so that this impression compound does not stick to the rubber bowl okay you would mold knead it nicely mold it and when it is warm you will shape it in the form of a arch place it on the mandibular denture base and then once it is comfortably warm you will place it in the after placing it in the cold cold water for few seconds you will place it in the patient's mouth and then the patient is given hot water to swallow to swish around the patient is asked to move the tongue speak naturally purse the lips all the natural movements day to day movements and functional movements which the patient would make the patient is asked to make and then you would check whether it is a particular rim is taking shape you will see a definite form of a rim of an alveolus being formed by the impression compound ring you will place it after washing it you will place it back on the on to the mandibular cast you would close the articulator the incisal pin should passively touch the incisal table if not if the height is more you will reduce the size of the rim made with made with the impression compound with a sharp bp blade if deficient you will add more compound after warming you will warm this rim also and make a new dough needing seven parts of green stick compound and three parts of cake compound and then you will add on to the superior surface of this rim and you will repeat the process place it in hot water few seconds cold water the patient's mouth the patient is given hot water asked to make the movements until you get a definite form of a rim made by this compound okay and the articulator is closing passively then you will take rubber base and make an index of this rim which is made by the impression compound index all over buccally lingually superiorly once the silicone sets you will remove the silicone index and then you will take this impression compound place it in hot water once it is soft you will remove it away from the mandibular denture base you will place the denture base back onto the master cast and the silicone index you will make vents in the 4 to 6 square shaped vents in the silicone index and then you will pour hot wax liquid wax through these vents holding the silicone index firm until it reaches the height of the vent uniformly so the wax should have poured into the space created by the removal of the impression compound rim uniformly all along and you when you check all the six vents if you can check that the wax has reached then you can remove the index once the wax has cooled sufficiently you will remove the index and you will you can then appreciate a new wax rim formed okay and then you will make a pop index buccally and lingually section it in the midline so that it is easy to remove in future okay on the customized wax rim you will now set the mandibular teeth then once the mandibular teeth have been set you will set the maxillary teeth in relation to the mandibular teeth now you have a customized wax trying dentures you can further customize it by removing little wax from the polished surface of the trying dentures applying silicone rubber base impression material placing it to the patient's mouth and then the patient is asked to speak to make all the movements with the cheek the lips the tongue okay once the rubber base sets you take it out of the patient's mouth rinse it thoroughly and then remove the excess which has flown onto the teeth 
so you'll remove the excess from the teeth and also from the border of the denture base any excess which has flown outside the border you will trim it off so now you have a customized set of dentures this denture is then placed in the patient's mouth and then its stability is checked okay so this particular set of denture which you have made in this particular method will be very stable in the patient's mouth however bad or poor the ridge is however less retention you have it will be stable in function the patient's mouth so this is how you determine a neutral zone for a completely edentulous patient while making removable prosthesis so this neutral zone is therefore so imperative for the stability of the treatment that you give okay this neutral zone can be also altered for example now you want the teeth to be where the neutral zone is not there so you will shift the position of the existing neutral zone how could you do that you could do it orthodontically for example a patient who has got a long narrow arch and a habit of keeping his tongue between the maxillary and mandibular incisors because of lack of space to create more space for air because of enlarged adenoids or tonsils if he has a habit of keeping his tongue protruded you could widen the maxillary arch orthodontically widen it posteriorly so automatically the vault will become flatter and the tongue will go backwards and upwards and rest inside the palatal vault where it was meant to rest so now once it becomes wider posteriorly it is exerting more force horizontally outwards this elastic band which was narrow narrow and cone shaped now constricted now is becoming wider at the posterior ends therefore exerting more force lingually on the maxillary anterior teeth so it is pushing the anteriors also backwards so the entire shape of the maxillary dentoalveolar arch changes so now it is exerting more force because the length of the band is not increasing okay it is only changing in shape now it is exerting more force at the posterior ends most intense contraction or exertion of force takes place at the distal end of the internal oblique line okay of the from the buccinator from outside inwards and most the tongue is also strongest at its posterior end so maximum force outwards and inwards is taking place at the posterior end okay so because of this force which is more here it is exerting more force backwards also this is how orthodontically you could change the shape of the neutral zone ensuring that the end result of your orthodontic treatment also remains stable the prognosis remains good you could also change the neutral zone using myofunctional appliances by equalizing balancing the forces exerted by the various muscles okay you could also change the vertical positioning of the teeth using bite therapies and change the extent of the neutral zone you could change it surgically also if more force is exert is being exerted by a bulky tongue you could do surgical resection of the tongue you could also do surgically incise into the buccinator if if the arches are very constructed and and the more force is being exerted inwards you could do surgical incision into the buccinator muscle to reduce the forces being exerted inwards you could also do vestibuloplasty in conjunction with the surgical treatment of the buccinators these are the methods how you could change the position of the neutral zone so why are we changing the position of the neutral zone because we want the teeth to be where the neutral zone does not exist that is why you're changing the position of the neutral zone so that the end result of your treatment is such that it is existing within the neutral zone so what are the so what are the take home messages the teeth and the alveolus are most yielding they yield to the muscles so we should always ensure that our treatment is such that the end result is respecting the adjacent musculature okay we must study the musculature before starting with our treatment treatment we should know the adjacent structures okay so this is about neutral zone that's it for today Okay see you until next time shall